Thank you, Scott, and uh, I too want to thank the ACS for putting on this uh, event and for inviting me to participate. Uh, as um, was mentioned, this case involves the Fourth Amendment, the case is United States versus Jones, um, but it is one that has been described as having conceivable Orwellian consequences, and you'll see mentioned to um, uh, 1984 and to Orwell himself in both the popular press and in the written opinions. The facts go something like this. Antoine Jones uh, owned a nightclub called The Levels, maybe some of you have been there, uh, located in the District of, of Columbia, but apparently he had a little bit of a side business. Um, back in 2004, a joint task force of the FBI and the D.C. Metropolitan Police began investigating Jones as part of a, a large cocaine selling ring. Uh, the agents used a series of techniques to try to gather information about Jones and his colleagues, um, with the ultimate goal of trying to find out where his stash was. Um, the agents uh, used visual uh, surveillance. They installed a fixed camera near his nightclub. Uh, they obtained pen register data um, that showed phone numbers um, that he was making calls to or receiving calls from. And they also obtained a warrant to wiretap his cell phone. But for our purposes, uh, the most important tool was a global positioning system, or, or GPS, um, tracking uh, uh, tracking system that the agents attached to his grand, uh, his Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee, actually it was his wife's, but for purposes of this, um, they counted it as his. Now, out of an abundance of caution, the officers did try to get a warrant. They did get, obtain a warrant to install the GPS, um, but it had some limits. They had to uh, install it within 10 days, and they could only track uh, Mr. Jones and his car in the District of Columbia. Um, unfortunately, the agents didn't install the device until 11 days later, um, and they followed his car into Maryland. And in fact, they uh, got underneath his car, where they put the GPS system, and put it into a battery um, in Maryland. Uh, apparently, this GPS device uh, could accurately establish the location of, of the GPS, um, uh, where, where the GPS was located, within uh, 50 to 100 feet, so fairly, um, fairly accurate. It was also capable of forwarding data to the agents through a, a cell phone system, but it didn't reveal who was driving the car um, and uh, what the driver and occupants might have been doing or uh, with whom they were with at their destinations. Among other things, the device allowed the agents to track Jones's Jeep uh, to the vicinity of a suspected stash house in Maryland. And based on this information um, the, and some other information that they gathered, the agents uh, believed that uh, Jones was expecting a sizable shipment of cocaine uh, in October of 2005. With this information, they went, they sought a search warrant, uh, which they obtained uh, for various locations. They recovered nearly $70,000 from Jones's Jeep, as well as um, Scarface-like quantities of cocaine, uh, thousands of dollars of cash, firearms, digital scales, and other, uh, other um, indicia of, of drug dealing. They also went to the Maryland Stash House, um, where they uh, found 97 kilos of powder cocaine, almost one kilo of crack cocaine, approximately $850,000 in cash, and a variety of other fun things. Um, Jones and his colleagues were indicted uh, for federal drug crimes, and uh, ultimately he was convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment uh, in order to forfeit a million dollars to boot. Now, on appeal, Jones argued that the warrantless use of this GPS system, attaching this device to his car and tracking his movements continuously for a month violated his Fourth Amendment rights. Now, for those who haven't taken criminal procedure, um, constitutional criminal procedure but yet, yet, let me pause and give you the sketchiest of uh, thumbnail sketches of the relevant Fourth Amendment doctrine. Uh, since the Supreme Court's seminal decision in uh, Katz versus U.S. back in 1967, the courts have employed a two-prong uh, test to determine whether or not a particular police technique uh, is subject to the Fourth Amendment. The first question is whether a person exhibited an actual or sub subjective expectation of privacy. Uh, the second is whether that expectation was one that society was prepared to recognize as reasonable. Um, if the answer to this inquiry is no, um, then the Fourth Amendment doesn't apply. It means that law enforcement can use the technique in question without a warrant or any type of individual suspicion. If the answer is yes, however, uh, then the techniques constitute a search. And as a general rule, general constitutional rule that uh, has as many holes in it as Swiss cheese, um, it would require a warrant based on probable cause uh, in order to investigate this criminal activity. Um, 
In the four decades since Katz was announced, uh, the court has held that a variety of law enforcement techniques do not require more, do not require uh, any kind of individualized suspicion. Um, but again, for present purposes, one decision stands out. Let me tell you about that. In 1983, the Supreme Court decided a case called United States versus Knotts. And that court uh, considered the installation of a tracking device on people's property without a warrant in order to follow um, their movements. Now, you've got to keep in mind that this tracking device um, uh, was uh, archaic compared to the one that was used um, in the Jones case. Um, at best, it kind of looks like a Bond movie. Um, as you got closer to the device, uh, the signal got stronger. As you got further away, uh, it got weaker. Um, and they followed Mr. Knotts, who was believed to, um, uh, and his colleagues, who was believed to have uh, 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 gathered uh, some, some uh, chemicals to make methamphetamine. They followed him for a, a, um, a three-day period, and ultimately coming to a cabin in Wisconsin. They used that information in order to obtain a warrant. They searched, and of course, they found a meth lab. Um, the court held that monitoring the beeper signals didn't invade a legitimate expectation of privacy. And so it didn't require a warrant. It didn't require any type of individualized suspicion. The beeper surveillance amounted to following an automobile on public streets and on highways. Um, and a person traveling in an automobile on, on these thoroughfares had no reasonable expectation of privacy in his public movements. The fact that the officers had used technology instead of in addition to uh, visual observations, didn't matter because uh, the Fourth Amendment uh, did not prohibit the police from augmenting um, their sensory abilities. The Knott's Court didn't resolve all of the issues um, that might be raised by this type of technology. Uh, Knott's noted in particular um, that the lim there was limited information that was discovered by using the beeper. Uh, it was the movements during a discrete journey. Um, and it reserved a question as to whether a warrant would be required in a case involving 24 hour, hour uh, surveillance, um, stating, quote, if such dragnet type law enforcement practices uh, as the respondent envisions should eventually occur, there will be time enough then to determine whether different constitutional principles may be applicable. And apparently, that time, at least in the Jones case, was now. Um, that caveat that was embedded within knots. Uh, was critical to the D.C. panel that ultimately examined the search, uh, or the, excuse me, the, the use of the GPS um, uh, technology, and they overturned his conviction. In an opinion written by uh, Judge Douglas Ginsburg, who will never be mistaken for a card-carrying member of the ACLU, um, the, ACE, the panel concluded that Knotts was not controlled, given the nature of the search at issue here. Jones had a reasonable expectation of privacy in the public movements of his vehicle, over the course of a month, um, because he had not exposed the totality of those movements uh, to the public. And in considering whether something is exposed to the public, um, as the term was used in Katz, you have to ask not whether a person can physically and may lawfully do, um, uh, but whether a reasonable person expects another person might do that. Um, applying the standard, they concluded that the whole of a person's movements um, over the course of a month is uh, is not exposed uh, inherently to the public because the likelihood of a stranger would observe all of these movements is essentially nil, and that was their phrase. Uh, when it comes to privacy, the panel argued that the whole may be um, more revealing than the parts. As Justice Ginsburg wrote, repeated visits to a church, a gym, a bar, or a booking tell a story not told by any single visit, as does one's not visiting any of those places in the course of a month. And he added, a person who knows all of another's travels can deduce whether he is a weekly churchgoer, a heavy drinker, a regular at the gym, an unfaithful husband, an outpatient receiving medical treatment, an associate of particular individuals or political groups, and not just one such fact about a person, but all such facts. So, applied to Jones, the, his expectation of privacy was one that society was prepared uh, to recognize as legitimate, given that, among other things, the court noted, Several states had held, or as a matter of statute, had written as a matter of statute, that police had to go get a warrant in order to use this GPS technology. That legislation showed that society uh, thought that, that would be a legitimate expectation of privacy. Um, as a practical matter, the panel suggested that you simply couldn't, uh, 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 police couldn't simply follow this visually, so there was a difference between visual surveillance. You couldn't follow an individual for 24 hours uh, a day for a month straight without bankrupting the police department. And when it comes to the Fourth Amendment, the court held that the means do matter. Um, so, for example, 
people do not, uh, do not need a warrant to obtain the information through an undercover officer. If you have lunch with someone, even in your home, um, they don't need a warrant. Uh, but they do need a warrant to wiretap your phone. Okay. Given that the GPS surveillance in this case constituted a search, the Jones panel then turned to the second question. The second question is whether or not um, they needed to have a warrant or whether there might be some exception to the warrant. They rejected the notion that the so-called automobile exception applied, and then they turned uh, in a brief part to say that the error was not so harmless as to, um, uh, to consider a, a sort of legal mulligan um, that would not require overturning uh, the conviction. Now, after the panel um, issued its opinion, the D.C. Circuit uh, considered whether to take this case in bulk. The entire panel, excuse me, the entire circuit considered whether they would review it. Um, and they denied a rehearing. But there were some important dissents, and those dissents essentially laid out what the government's case will be before the Supreme Court. Um, the dissent um, said more or less that the position uh, taken by uh, the government here was consistent not only with um, all of the precedents that existed in the Court of, Court of Appeals, the, the Circuit Court of Appeals across the nation, except for uh, the D.C. Circuit, but it also uh, was uh, uh, consistent with Knott's itself. Um, as Knott's had said, nothing prohibits a police from augmenting their sensory um, uh, facilities uh, by using uh, modern technology. Um, they thought it was unconvincing that, they, that the court had tried to distinguish Knott's, um, not on the basis of what the police did, um, uh, in terms of the volume of the information. Uh, and what is more, the panel opinion um, said that they didn't provide any guidance to law enforcement as to what point something goes from a not situation that does not require a warrant or probable cause to something where there is the accumulation of information such that you do have to go see a magistrate and you do need some type of individualized suspicion. Um, as the uh, dissenter said, presumably, had the GPS device been used for an hour or perhaps a day or whatever period the panel believed was consistent with the normal surveillance, the evidence obtained could have been admitted without Fourth Amendment problems. And they rejected the notion that the whole uh, reveals more than does the sum of the parts. Um, in some pretty uh, pointed language, uh, the, the dissenter said, the reasonable expectation of privacy as to a person's movements on the highway is, as not said, zero. The sum of an infinite number of zero parts is also zero. Um, whatever the whole revealed, the, t the reasonable expectation of privacy test shouldn't be determined uh, by this aggregate versus uh, singular incidents. Um, now, how is this, how is this uh, uh, decision uh, likely to be played out in the court? Well, I think you're going to see the same type of arguments being made on both sides. It's part of a continuing march of technology and it's clashed with Fourth Amendment values. Um, one of the few cases in which the Supreme Court found that, uh, uh, that Katz uh, was implicated, that there was um, a Fourth Amendment concern involved uh, the use of thermal imager scanning uh, several years ago in a case called Kylo. Um, but that intruded into the home, and the opinion was written by Justice Scalia, who, although not um, a big believer in um, uh, Katz, certainly has a, uh, a degree of solicitude towards the home. Um, what is of concern to me is the notion of whether the Fourth Amendment embraces a right of anonymity. Um, by that I mean that the Fourth Amendment is infringed uh, not by the revelation of particular instances of information in the public, but by gathering massive amounts of information in the aggregate and learning about everyone's uh, uh, personal details through that aggregation. Uh, a sleeper issue in this, and I, I, I hope it will play out, but I'm not so sure it will, um, is that the, this case can be decided not on privacy, but instead on issues of property. Um, the Fourth Amendment uh, protects property as well as privacy, although after Katz, many people have, have, have eschewed that position. Um, and here you have officers placing a GPS device on their car. Personally, I wouldn't want law enforcement to be doing that on my car. I don't think I have anything uh, that, uh, that uh, they'd be wanting, wanting to search for. Uh, but um, that would be a interference with my property rights, my right to property. Um, and the court has held, uh, in other opinions, that uh, the Fourth Amendment does extend beyond these mere privacy concerns. Um, this would force the court to try to square its past decisions, which have emphasized privacy, and a whole slew of other cases that are not in the Fourth Amendment arena, but still concern property rights, whether it is 
issues related to the takings clause, whether it's issues related to civil forfeiture, whether it is the few cases that have come down with regards to excessive fines um, uh, and uh, constitutional limitations found in the Eighth Amendment. Uh, what is my prediction? Well, uh, certainly, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are Orwellian implications. And if you listen to the judges, some of the judges who dissented uh, from opinions uh, across the nation, they've made those statements. Um, Diane Wood, who was uh, considered for uh, the Supreme Court slot that was uh, ultimately filled by, uh, I can't remember whether it was Sotomayor or instead uh, Kay, but she was under consideration. Um, she said that this uh, system, this GPS system, would, quote, make this make the system that George Orwell depicted in his famous novel, 1984, seem clumsy. Um, Alex Kaczynski, also someone who would never be uh, considered a, uh, an arch liberal, um, said that 1984 may have come a little bit better than predicted, but it's here at last. Uh, similar phrases were, have been offered by district courts across the nation, um, as well as by Judge uh, Richard Posner, um, who, although upholding the device, said that there were some serious concerns involved. Um, what is my prediction? I think the Roberts Court took this opinion, uh, took this case to overturn the D.C. Circuit. Um, and I suspect they will find that there is no uh, reasonable expectation of privacy um, in using this device. What are the consequences? Well, they could be quite large. Um, mostly they're going to be for those who might be considered members of the criminal class. Um, but uh, uh, I think it should be something that all of us should be concerned about. And for me, at least, it is yet another example of what I, I wrote about, um, seems like eons ago, um, a drug exception to the uh, Fourth Amendment, an evolving drug exception that you can see in a variety of areas, but um, is uh, at its worst in the Fourth Amendment. But actually, since it's appropriate, since it is um, only a few days after 9-11, I think that there is yet another exception. I, I, you can call it the terror exception. It's something I'm writing right now. I call it the bin Laden exception. And I think the GPS device um, uh, this case in particular raises some issues that in the back of the mind the courts are thinking about what are the implications for the so-called war on terror. Um, with that, I will uh, call it. Thank you very much.